Rise and crime, everybody. I'm Rachel Souza. And I'm Michelle Chan. And we are back in the same room, thank God, because that over the phone stuff just not not fun that was a difficult time it was not cute it was not fun it was was actually easy to edit really yeah in the beginning when you clap that was good but then there's like spaces there's like large chunks of spaces where it's obvious which person talks so it was easy oh yeah and then it's easy to edit out when we talk at the same time i'm not gonna lie to you i did not listen to it because i was too scared that it was bad (laughs) (laughs) it was okay your room was just echoey I think this room's pretty echoey, too, just hearing it right now. It's okay. Well, we have no other choice. You guys are just going to have to deal with it. We're sorry. For Um, now. Yeah. So, first I just wanted to say, there's a lot of crime happening close to us right now. Yes. (laughs) And we'll touch more on that later. So, I think if you're from our area, you probably know what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, more on that later. Uh, let's, oh, let me start off by giving the disclaimer that we don't mean any disrespect to anybody that we talk about at all. Um, we're just trying to spread information and interesting stories that you guys might find interesting. Uh, we are by no means experts on crime. We just find it real interesting. Yeah. And we're still figuring out the whole podcast thing, so... Give us some time. It will get better. It will, I promise. I promise. All right. So, small case of the week. So, Mounties at Evansburg. Why are uh, there no, no Mounties in Ontario? Well, like, there is. We just never see them. <laughs> I mean, they've got cars. <laughs> I know, but I just want to see a Mountie every now and then. Mm, that'd, be, that'd be funny. <laughs> I Please. think they're, like, uniforms funny my mom dressed up as a mountie for halloween That's a couple so years cute. ago oh my god she looked so silly okay. mounties at evansburg got called on august 6 2015 about a stolen vehicle in the summer village of seba beach which is west of edmonton so the driver was seen to be swerving from shoulder to shoulder when uh officers got there he started driving faster so it was like this wild chase and eventually he rammed into a police cruiser, but then he kept driving away and he drove through several like fields before he got out and started running away. And so like a team of officers and their dogs went out looking for him and they found him in a tree hiding. In a tree? In a tree. Wow. Yep. That is very silly. Mm-hmm. Um, like... <laughs> it just reminds me of those like firefighters who get called to people's houses to get cats out of trees. Yeah. But this one's a whole man. It's an entire man in a tree. So the driver's name was Daniel Patrick O'Donnell, and he was charged with dangerous operation of motor vehicle and flight from police. Wow. So like was he do you know if he was under the influence of anything or was he just driving crazy? He was just driving crazy. He also had no um home address and it was reported that it was a stolen vehicle. Oh wow! So that's lots why he of was crimes. <laughs> yes, Run many from crimes. The police. Well, that's interesting. That is a very short, short case. Yeah. And I have a kind of short, long case, but that's okay because we have tons to talk about afterwards. Because mm-hmm. Canada is crazy right now. Um, okay, so I'm doing the case of Andrea or Andrea. I heard both in different podcasts. I'm gonna go with Andrea Geisbrecht. Also, the last name was also pronounced different ways in different like, places that I've watched in crime cases. I'm just going to go with the one that I heard on the news, which was Geisbrecht. But, yeah, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing things wrong. So, she was born in 1974 in Ontario, but she moved to Winnipeg at age four, and she resided in and around Winnipeg for the rest of her life. So, she grew up there. She met her husband when she was in high school, and they got married when she was 23. Uh, She attended Red River College and got a diploma in business administration. Her and her husband, Jeremy, they had two kids together. And they just, like, lived in a quaint suburb called the Maples. Uh, She was well-known around town because she did a lot of volunteering uh, at different charities and different missions. And everybody said that she was just, like, kind of like a soccer mom. Okay. You know, just, like, two athletic kids who are... Driving around the van. Oh, yeah, who participate in... uh, 
community sports. Bake we sales. all love House League Soccer. You already know. Soccer Mom, one of the best movies of all time, obviously. If you haven't seen it, it's like she's the man, but with soccer moms. And <laughs> wow, that was off track. The moms pretend to be men. No, it was one mom, and she... Spoiler alert, first of all, if you haven't seen the hit film Soccer Mom, please skip, like, 30 seconds ahead. No, the mom, like, disguises herself as the soccer coach to coach her daughter's soccer team. I feel like I've seen it. It's fantastic. That's all I have to say. (laughs) So, she was just known to be, like, yeah, a soccer mom. Uh, It was also... I heard... Okay, this one I only found in one news article... But I'm going to say it just in case it is... Well, it's from the news, so it could be true. I don't know. It was... A lot of the news articles said she was a home care worker. So she worked in, like, just, like, senior homes, just, like, doing business and such. But another article said she worked at Tim Hortons. Yeah, not sure. I know for sure she was a home care worker. I'm not sure if she also worked at the Tim Hortons or if that was later. But that's what I read. So growing up, it... She was said to have a good family with hardworking parents, but her parents were addicted to gambling. So they had a severe gambling addiction, and they actually both passed away when she was in her 30s, and they left behind a lot of debt for her and a lot of loans that she had that she couldn't really pay back. Mm-hmm. So she actually herself began gambling because she thought that if she gambled, she'd get the money back to be able to pay all these things. But this gambling turned into a very, very steep gambling addiction. And she ended up losing even more money. So she couldn't even pay her own expenses, let alone pay off her parents' expenses. Okay. So for this, she needed to find a way to get this money back. So she started to ask for loans from like friends, from businesses and such like that. So she had this one 73-year-old neighbor who was friends with her parents before they passed because, so when her parents passed, her family moved into her parents' home. So she met this neighbor who is close to her parents and she asked the neighbor for money because she had none. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor felt really bad for her seeing as her parents had just passed and uh, she was raising two kids and she just, and they left her with so much debt. She didn't know about the gambling addiction. So she just thought, I need to help this, my neighbor out, or her house is going to get repossessed. So she actually lent her up to $8,000. Okay. That's Um, a lot of money. That is a lot of money. But uh, Andrea promised that she would pay her back. And Mm -hmm. she was also taking out loans from various other people. And then she decided to pay them back. So she wrote them checks. And of course, these checks all bounced. They were all from a bank account that she had closed two years prior. So she was just handing away these fraudulent checks and the lady was like hey sis these checks they don't work i cannot cash them and she was just like oh no uh don't worry i'll get you the money back Mm -hmm. and how she takes out more loans and goes gambling again oh my god this sounds like the worst cycle so she's deep into these into debt she's deep into owing people money and all these fraudulent checks it's causing a lot of problems in her marriage her husband's really frustrated with her spending all the money and because like she still has to provide for her kids too as well it's like a big huge problem so eventually uh she is actually charged with fraud Mm -hmm. for all the fraud that she's doing Mm -hmm. and the 73 year old lady testified saying she felt so used and so just like taken advantage of by her which is totally fair because, geez, she's taken so much money from her. Mm -hmm. And she was sentenced to a suspended sentence of two years. Plus, she had to pay back month by month, and she was not allowed to gamble anymore. And she was also on supervised probation. So she was sentenced to all these things. Yeah. But she broke her probation, like, pretty quickly, and she went gambling. Of course she did. (laughs) Because addiction is horrible and she needed i think she just needed some therapy yeah but instead she was just going for it again so the reason she did not get like jail time is because she was low risk to reoffend. she had no mental health previous mental health issues and she was reported to be pretty mentally sane and she decided and she told the courts that she wanted help instead of jail time but then she didn't really get the help that she said she so badly wanted yeah this was just all a lot of she was going through a lot of financial trouble so now that we're gonna take a turn just a big turn 
<laughs> all right. This case is so messy, and I. D- <laughs> that was all of her kind of like background. Mm-hmm. Now we get into her actual crimes. Not oh. that those weren't crimes; they were, but that was not actually what we're here to talk about. Wow, the whole Andrew. time I thought the crime was going to happen to her, but I didn't know she was going to commit these crimes. Oh, you're you're in for something. Oh, because if you think that's her crimes, get buckle up, kids. Here we go. So there's other kind of weird things about her. So she was very secret around her pregnancy. So when she was pregnant with her and Jeremy's first child, she actually didn't tell Jeremy she was pregnant. To the point where he found out from a cell phone call from the hospital after the child was born. What? Wait, how does she hide her? She's just getting fat? Like what? (laughs) I don't understand. I don't know. Some women don't like grow a huge belly when they're I know, but you still grow a belly. What if she's wearing sweaters? I don't know. I feel like that's really difficult to do. How but do you she hide it. a pregnant and your like mood swings and everything? She hid it from him. Okay, that's almost impressive. And he was like, "What? You're, we're having a baby? That's crazy!" And then yeah, so then they had a child, their eldest child. Was it his? Yeah, it was his. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so they found this. She just was very, very secretive about pregnancy stuff. I thought when you said that, she I thought you meant, like, towards other people, not her own husband. No, her own husband, That's yeah. so weird. Okay, so, back to the financial troubles. That was just a little tidbit in there. So, she obviously was owing a ton of people money. She had broken her probation, which she was going to court for soon. During her probation, she also committed more acts of fraud, which she was, she was going to court for soon. So she her life is just kind of a mess right now. Mm-hmm. She's just kind of in it. And one of the places she owed money was to a U-Haul storage company. So she had a storage locker there, and she had owed them $276 uh, for the rental of the locker. Um, and this payment was about 130 days overdue. Oh, okay. But she just kept calling them saying, don't worry, guys, I'm going to show up. Don't worry, y'all. It'll be paid. Just give me a sec. I'll be right down there. And every time she told them she would be down there to pay it, she wouldn't show up. So they would just call her again and be like, hey, girl, where are you? We need our money. And she would be like, oh, coming soon. Please don't, please don't auction off my stuff. It's my dead dad's belongings, and I really, really don't want to lose them. Mm -hmm. So they felt bad for her. They took pity. They were just like, okay, fine. We'll give you another week. And they just kept doing this over and over. Till eventually she owed even more money for the locker. And they are kind of like, okay, this girl's never going to pay it. So on October 20th, 2014, uh, Andrea's... 40 at this point. Her children are 12 and 14. They decide, girl, it's enough time. We're going to go through your locker and auction off what we can. Um, There's no way you can stop us now. So this nice little U-Haul worker goes over to the locker, opens it up. You've all seen Storage Wars. You know how it be. Is there bodies in there? Not yet. Oh. (laughs) Oh, shit. Unless there is. Wait, so he goes over, he's gonna go see what money he can make, you know, see those old CDs, be like, I can get three dollars for that. You, yeah, storage wars stuff. He opens the locker and he finds that there's two Rubbermaid blue bins in there and three laundry buckets. So picture like those blue bins with the handles and the lid that you would like transport stuff if you're moving in or like toys as a kid, you know those ones? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and then three laundry buckets that would hold about five gallons. Okay. So, and they all had lids on them. Okay. And that was the only thing in this whole locker. Yeah. And you, you know what a storage locker looks like, looks like. It's pretty big. Like, there was tons of room in there, but there was just those items. So he goes over, he opens one, he sees that inside there's, uh, he opens one of the blue bins, and inside there's a duffel bag. So he opens the duffel bag, and then inside the duffel bag there's a backpack. So he opens the backpack and inside the backpack there's a kitchen bag. Okay. So he opens the kitchen bag and he finds the remains of a baby boy. <gasps> what? In oh the my bin. god, no, 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 no. So obviously this poor U-Haul worker runs out of there, calls the police and is like, hey man, I just found the limb of an infant in one of our storage lockers. You need to get down here. 
So the police show up and they go through this storage locker. If you look it up, you can find a picture of what the storage locker looks like. It's just like the bins all stacked in the back left of it and the rest is just empty. Um, so the police go through it and they first, they first open the bin that he, the worker had already seen and they, yes, they find that it is a baby boy, uh, in a kitchen bag, in a backpack, in a duffel bag, in the bin. And there's also some toy cars, some children's socks and underwear, and a coupon for a McDonald's Happy Meal in the bin. Okay. So they next move to the second bin and they open it and inside there is a duffel bag and in the duffel bag there's a garbage bag and in the garbage bag there's a kitchen bag and in the kitchen bag there's a towel and in the towel there's another towel and then in that towel is the body of a, another baby boy. Oh my god! Um, uh, with the umbilical cord still attached. What the heck? What is she doing? Why are there so many layers? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so... In the same blue bin, there is also another duffel bag, garbage bag, kitchen bag, towel, towel, with a <laughs> baby... No, this is not funny. I'm sorry. It sounds like one of those games where, you know, when you, like... It sounds like Russian babushka dolls. Yeah, but also, you know that hamburger game where you, like, catch the different ingredients? Like, s- oh, Sky Burger? Yeah. What does that have to do with this at all? I don't know. When you were, like, double bag, kitchen bag, towel, towel. It sounds like you're making the thing. Oh, I hate I'm that sorry. comparison so much. I'm sorry. I also haven't thought about Sky Burger in years. <laughs> it's good that you remember the name because I couldn't. Okay, oh, detour. Um, short break from this. Another app that I rediscovered um, a co- last week because... So Josh was saying that he's a camp counselor and he was saying the kids at his camp do MASH. Remember like the mm-hmm. mansion, apartment, shack and house. And I was like, oh my gosh, when I was younger, I used to play on the MASH app all the time. There was an so, app? Yeah. I just drew it. Okay, well, I was annoying and had an iPad at the age of like 10. Okay. <laughs> um, so I redownloaded the MASH app as a joke to see it. And now every day I've been doing the Daily Fortune because it's been really silly. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the days... Um, I was with Jesse, and we are eating at Scatterbush. And if you haven't eaten at Scatterbush, I feel bad for you. It's the best food ever. And I did her daily fortune. It said she was going to experience a moment of luxury at, like, 7 p.m. or something like that. Okay. And right at 7 p.m., our food came, and Sam Smith started playing, which is Jesse's favorite artist, my least favorite artist. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's your moment of luxury. I mean, yeah, it's true. Anyways, back to what we were saying. The horrible, horrible story. So in that one, they found only the skeletal remains of the infant. Mm-hmm. Okay, so wait, how many How many infants are there? Three? We're at three baby boys right now. Okay. So wait, how, wait, what are her children now? Like, are they boys, girls? Two boys, 12 two and boys. 14. Okay. Um, so then that's the two rubber made bins. So now they're moving over to the laundry pails. There's three of them. So they take the lid off the first one. And in this laundry pail... They find a garbage bag, and then in the garbage bag, there's a towel, and then in the towel, there's a garbage bag, and in the garbage bag, there's a towel, and in the towel, there's a kitchen bag, and in that, they find a baby girl. Oh. Um, obviously, they're all deceased. Um, and then they open the next laundry pail, um, and they find a, a slab of concrete, and they cut open the concrete, and inside, they find a... Uh, the body of a preemie infant boy. So all of, um, oh wait, I'll just, I'll say the last one first. There's another laundry pail. They open it and inside they find hardened powdered detergent. And underneath the powdered detergent, they find another infant boy. So in total, there's five infant boys and one infant girl. Did she hide all these pregnancies? I don't understand. You'll see. So a normal gestation period is about 40 weeks. um, And they were all 34 to 42 weeks gestation, which means they were all likely, like, born alive. Mm -hmm. Police and authorities immediately did forensics testing on all these infant bodies that were found. And all six were concluded to be that of Andrea and Jeremy's. Um, But Jeremy had, like, no No idea. idea that these babies were there. The storage locker was actually under Andrea's maiden name, so Andrea Nowarinsky. Mm-hmm. 
it was logged to an address that was not her actual address, like a fake home address. So it was clear that she was trying to hide this storage locker. So she was arrested, obviously, because they had just found six infant bodies in her storage locker. But after seven months, she was actually released on bail of $15,000. Who bailed her out? Um, I don't, did not say, I'm sorry. Who has the money to bail her out and who would want to? Um, and at this point, she was also in court for all of her fraud charges, and it was estimated she had lost about $650,000 from gambling. Oh my god. So everything is just kind of horrible, um, and she's just creating horrible situations all around. And so basically, this was a really, really big court case, because she can't be charged with murder, because there's no way to t- figure out how the infants died because they were had been there for so long and they were so decomposed that there was no way to tell the cause of death. Mm-hmm. Um, and also there was no way to prove that she had killed them. And it was also not, you were not able to prove with 100% certainty that they were not stillborn. Mm-hmm. So she, she couldn't prove that they were born alive. The charge that she was facing was disposing dead bodies of children with intent to conceal delivery. So that was the charge that she was facing. Uh-huh. Uh, six counts of it, obviously. Uh-huh. Her defense... Her defense's argument was that she was not disposing the bodies, but saving them. Because disposing means to get rid of, and she was not getting rid of them. She was just saving them in a locker, and her defense lawyer said, for purposes he did not know. Okay. Which is very sketchy. That's so sus. Doctors said that there was a 1 in 500 trillion chance that all six were stillborn. Yeah, I'm... Unlikely, it seems. But, of course, not. that's not 100% sure. Mm-hmm. So they could not say that for sure. Mm, during this trial, lots of things came out. Like, she had had 10 abortions between 1994 and 2011 and had been pregnant at least 18 times between the ages of 20 and 38. Oh, my God. Do what? Do they, Does she just not take birth control at all? Well, you know some people are, like, against birth control. Were they one of them? It doesn't say... That's but, a lot of pregnancies. Um, yeah. That's a lot of concealed pregnancies. Not all of them are concealed. She could have told her husband about her abortions. They could have had that talk. But... How many times? Six of them were definitely concealed. So the courts did prove that she was trying to hide the fact that these bodies were there because they were put in all these bags to yeah. to mask the smell of decomposing bodies. And she was obviously trying to hide the fact that the storage locker even existed. Mm-hmm. And she was sentenced to eight and a half years in prison. But earlier this year, that sentence was actually reduced to three years. Why? Because they... The only reason the sentence was so harsh in the first place was that they had underlying assumptions that she had killed these children, but there's no way to prove that. So in a court of law, she actually couldn't be sentenced to that much. 11 years was the maximum sentence she could have received for this, and they felt that three years was appropriate, six months per baby, as they could have died naturally, they could have been stillborn. There's so many things that go into it, and they said there was no way that she had forced, tried to force an abortion or anything, like they did medical testing and stuff. So there's not much to prove because of how decomposed the bodies were and how secretive it really was. Like, there was not a lot of information to find, and there was no reason as to why they were ever there ever released. She had never told anybody why. Oh my god. And she was released back to her family uh, in April. And they took her back? Like, I doesn't say much after that. After that, it kind of just goes quiet. <laughs> That's awful. It's so tragic and so, like... It messes with your brain a lot because you're just kind of like, why? But also, like, you don't, there's not much to tell what actually happened, which is really frustrating. That's so many and dead babies. I feel like she showed no remorse. And I definitely think that she should have served her whole eight and a half. I think so too. I think she should have gotten more. But under the law, she could not. Oh, man. Um, Something that I found interesting, I was reading Reddit theories, which is bad, but I was reading them because I find it very, very interesting. And one of them, oh, the reason I talked about all the fraud and everything is to connect it. Like, one of the theories was that she was already in so much debt, she could not afford to have more babies. Like, she couldn't afford to raise more children. She so can that's... afford condoms. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, she could not... Um, well, one thing, though, is her husband did have a vasectomy in 2011, but he never went up, went to the follow-up appointment to see if it was successful. Oh. Oh, my God. And there's no way he would have, like, known if she hid all these pregnancies. Right? What I find a little bit weird is she had so many abortions. Why? What makes these six different? Like, why didn't she get these six aborted? I don't know. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. It is crazy, and there's not enough. There's not as much information as I was as I would like. Mm-hmm. I read so many articles. I think there is definitely more to the story that could be horrible, but that we'll probably never find out. Well, that sucks. Yeah, and that's the story of Andrea Geisbrecht. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about the crime that's happening in Canada right now. There's four. Okay, well, there's two main cases and then two smaller local ones that I've read recently. Um, just to end this off, Markham is freaking wild right now. Yeah. Four bodies. Were found in a house in Markham. Uh, it was the son, Menhaz Zaman, was charged with four counts of first-degree murder for killing both his parents, his grandmother, and his sister. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible story. Mm -hmm. Which we will do a full case on later. Um, Once there's a lot of court stuff to go through and a lot of details to still be released, so I don't think it would be fair to talk about it just yet. Mm -hmm. But I do recommend reading up on it. It is horrible. And in the description of this video, we will post the link to the GoFundMe for the funerals of the family members. Please, if you have anything to give, every dollar helps. Uh, yes. And also, yeah, just, it's really messed up story. It reminds me of the Jennifer Pan story a lot. Mm-hmm. I do recommend reading it. Uh, what else has been happening? In Canada, there's those two BC boys... What about them? You don't. Oh, I it's don't like the one. biggest Canada case right now. So these two boys, Cam McLeod and Briar Schlemaski, that's probably wrong. I'm doing this from memory. I'm sorry. They are wanted for the murder of three people, and they're currently running all across Canada trying to get away. So they started in BC, and right now, the last I read, they're in New York Landing, uh, Manitoba. Wait, or what did they do? They murdered a couple from one. The couple was from Australia and America, and another person from Canada. Oh my god. So it's like a... And they're 19 and 18 years old, I believe. That's so scary. And they're currently on the run. The last I read, they were stopped by a ride check, and the police didn't recognize them, so they got let go. So how did they realize afterwards? And then afterwards, the police saw the pictures and were like, oh shit. Oh no. So that's a thing. Two smaller cases... In Markham right now, there is actually a shooting in Markham last night, which is... Oh, is this going out today? Yeah. So last night, there was a shooting in Markham near Markville Mall, and one person was left dead from that, so Markham's a little bit crazy right now. And in Aurora, there was also a house that got burned down with somebody inside. Oh my. And it was said to be an act of arson and murder. So there's a lot going around right now in Canada, specifically our area, which is... Your region. What's new, Michelle? Uh, I just wrote an exam. Oh, that's not fun. No. <laughs> I'm still in summer. <laughs> I'm almost done, okay? That and then true. I'll be home. Yay, thank goodness we can watch Love Island. I want to watch all the episodes at once. And catch up on the new season of Drag Race, too. We have not yes. finished that either. And then I want to watch the American Love Island. Oh, goodness, we love reality TV. Um... <laughs> Okay, before we end this, give a recommendation of something this week. Something to watch, something to listen to. Oh, I wanted to uh, watch the latest season of Orange is the New Black. It's the last one. Have you watched it yet? Yeah, I've seen all of it. Oh, so that's your recommendation? Yeah, I recommend you watch Orange is the New Black. Um, You also recommended to me to watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. Which I need to do. That is a good movie. If you like Tarantino, it's a very classic film from him. Ah, nice and it has some true crime connections yes so charles manson very much recommend i haven't seen it yet recommend to myself sorry there was a fly <laughs> did i get it i did not uh, 
my recommendation this week is oh i'll recommend two things i'll recommend a crime, true crime youtuber that i really 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 enjoy watching eleanor neal she's super cool and she covers a lot of cases really well and she has the coolest accent of all time where's she from she's from england Mm -hmm. (laughs) and her accent's just amazing and the other thing i will recommend is oh this is horrible okay so i'm rewatching glee and i recommend glee i've never seen glee never seen glee (laughs) to all the people who have never seen glee just go watch the episode dream on it's in season one it has neil patrick harris in it just do it so remember, even if you climb up a tree, it doesn't mean the police are going to leave you alone. And, oh, this one's bad. Just because you live in Winnipeg doesn't mean you're going to win a uh, big. Oh my god. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Peace out.